The first deformable system that we're going to look at are axial bars subjected to forces along their long axis. So I have a little specimen here. This is what's known as a dumbbell specimen. It's cut out of rubber, so it's a little floppy. But we're going to apply an axial load and deform it. And what we'd like to do is build a complete mechanical theory to describe that very simple process. And, and this is really going to be the same process that we use for more and more complicated systems. And the way we're going to build theories that describe the mechanical behavior of deformable systems is that we're always going to start with a kinematic assumption. So we'll do a mechanical test of a system, look at its motion, and then try and build that into mathematical relationships that we can use to describe the behavior. And so what I've done here is I've loaded up a similar specimen to this dumbbell specimen into this machine here, and I've scored it with these black lines here so that we can visually observe what's going to happen to the material. And that's really the important part of this test is to observe the motion so that we can create mathematical relationships that describe the motion. And in this case, displacements, we'll relate them to strains, which is relative motion, which we then relate to stresses and forces and equilibrium. So that's the whole procedure here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and move the crosshead of the machine up, and it's going to stretch the specimen here by applying a force to it. And the important thing here to observe is what happens to those black lines that I drew on the surface. So the line at the bottom moved a little bit. The line at the top moved more. So there was more displacement. So the displacement is moving point by point along the length of the bar. It's changing. And if we look at the marks that are drawn here horizontally across the specimen, what we'll notice is that they remain horizontal. So what we get out of that is what's known as a plane sections remain plane assumption. And so that, together with an observation of what the actual displacements are, allows us then to derive a kinematic relationship that describes that motion quite precisely. And then we'll build that into a more complete theory.